let's get right into it. Number 7. Time Blindness Imagine waking up and genuinely believing you've only slept for 10 minutes, only to discover the sun has relocated itself across the entire sky like it's speed-running daylight. Your phone says 8 hours passed but your brain says, nah, we skipped all that. Welcome to the first hint that time might not be the objective, universal ruler we pretend it is. It's more like a slightly drunk tour guide who keeps saying, we're almost there, when you are absolutely not almost there. Your brain doesn't measure time directly. That's right, there is no tiny internal clock ticking inside your skull. What you do have is a bunch of neurons trying their best to guess how much stuff happened and how interesting that stuff was. If your day is boring, your brain stretches it like cheap chewing gum. If your day is exciting, it compresses everything into what feels like 15 minutes. In psychological terms, we call this time perception. In real life terms, it's why school felt like a prison sentence and why vacations feel like TikTok videos, three seconds long and then gone forever. Scientists argue that time might be a construct your brain builds to keep reality from feeling like a chaotic slideshow. Instead of experiencing a pile of disconnected moments, your brain forces them into a timeline, like a kid trying to shove random puzzle pieces into a shape that vaguely resembles a horse. The brain needs sequences, patterns, cause and effect. Without the feeling of time, everything would happen all at once, and you'd open the fridge while also eating breakfast while also remembering you left the stove on in 2018. So is time real? Maybe. But the way you feel time? That's basically emotional weather. It shifts depending on mood, attention and stress. Feeling anxious? Time crawls so slowly you might qualify for geologic age measurements. Feeling busy? Hours evaporate faster than water in the Sahara. Or, in simpler terms, time is real, but your experience of it is a full-time liar. Number 6. The Slow Motion Glitch Picture this. You're mid-air on a roller coaster, the world flipping upside down, your stomach migrating to a new postal code. When suddenly the moment stretches out like melted mozzarella, everything moves in slow motion. Your brain becomes Christopher Nolan for three full seconds. Then, just as quickly, time snaps back to normal, leaving you wondering if you unlocked a cheat code or had a minor existential episode. This bizarre slow motion effect doesn't mean time literally slowed down. What actually happened is your brain went into emergency overdrive. When you perceive danger, your amygdala, the drama queen of your brain, starts recording memories with extra detail, like switching from 30 frames per second to 120 frames per second. You remember the moment as longer because there's simply more data packed into it. It's the difference between flipping through a coloring book versus flipping through a fully illustrated graphic novel. More pages equals longer story. This is why people who've been in accidents swear the moment felt stretched and syrupy, like the universe lagged. It's not the universe, it's your brain saying, we might die, please pay attention, and slamming the record button harder than a tourist at a dolphin show. Neuroscientists tested this by dropping volunteers backwards in freefall, science is wild, and found that participants didn't actually perceive time slowing. They only remembered it as slower. The slow motion glitch is a memory effect, not a real-time effect. So your slow motion moment wasn't physics breaking. It was just your brain filming a dramatic cinematic scene because it thought it might be your final episode. Basically, you became your own movie director. Terrified, screaming, but oddly artistic. Number 5. The Stopwatch in Your Head You ever try to meditate and think, okay, that must have been at least 20 minutes, only to check the time and discover it's been 4? 4 minutes. Your brain pulls a reverse magic trick, stretching tiny moments into eternity while making whole afternoons disappear. But here's the wild part. Humans actually think we can measure time internally. Spoiler, we can't. Not consistently. Your brain uses three main ingredients to fake the illusion of time passing, attention, memory, and expectation. If you're paying attention, time slows. If you're not, time yeets itself into a black hole. And if you expect something to take long, like waiting for your food when you're starving, your brain drags time out like a passive-aggressive roommate doing chores. It's not measuring seconds, it's measuring vibes. Scientists think our internal stopwatch is more like a committee of neural circuits making approximations. They argue about pacing disagree on what counts as a moment, and sometimes go on strike. That's why one minute feels different depending on whether you're kissing someone or microwaving leftovers. Same 60 seconds, very different brain math. And if you've ever had that moment where you're convinced your alarm didn't ring even though you literally turned it off in your sleep, that's just your brain fast-forwarding the whole timeline like it's skipping a boring cutscene. Time isn't being experienced, your brain is editing it. In short, the stopwatch in your head is less of a tool and more of a toddler with crayons. Cute, unpredictable and absolutely not qualified to keep track of anything. Number 4. Time really does move faster as you age. You know that cliche older people love? Time speeds up as you get older. And you, at age 12, would roll your eyes because summer vacation lasted 40 emotionally rich years. Well, turns out the old people were right. Again, and your younger self owes them an apology. Here's the psychological plot twist. 
When you're young, everything is new. Your brain is constantly forming fresh memories, absorbing details, and treating every experience like it needs to be archived in high definition. New memories stretch time. The world is large, unfamiliar, and your brain is basically a tourist taking pictures of everything. Trees, rocks, doorknobs, whatever. Then adulthood hits, and suddenly your daily life becomes a copy-paste routine. Wake up, work, eat, pretend you're being productive, scroll, sleep. Repeat until existential dread kicks in. Your brain says, we've seen all this before, and stops recording as many details. Fewer memories equals shorter perceived time. Your life feels like someone is hitting the skip button without asking your permission. There's a biological angle too. Some researchers think your brain's internal processes literally slow down as you age, meaning the world feels like it's moving faster around you. It's like the universe set its playback speed to 1.25 times and forgot to tell you. The result? Years vanish like Snapchat messages, and before you know it, you're saying things like, wasn't 2016 just last week, while googling symptoms you definitely don't have. So no, time isn't speeding up, you're just collecting fewer moments worth remembering. The cruel irony, realizing this, becomes a moment you'll absolutely remember. Number 3. The Illusion of the Present Moment Try to focus on right now. Not the second before this one, not the one after, just the perfect center of time called the present. You can't. Because by the time you identify a moment, it's already gone. You're basically trying to catch fog with chopsticks. Your brain doesn't even experience the world in real time. It delays everything by about 80 to 100 milliseconds, so it can stitch your senses together into one coherent moment. Vision, hearing, touch. They all arrive at slightly different times, and your brain edits them into a single now, like a frantic film editor on a caffeine binge. So technically, you are always living in the past. The present moment is a high-quality hallucination created because your brain doesn't want you panicking about lagging behind reality. If that wasn't weird enough, your brain also predicts the immediate future. Every time you catch a ball, walk through a doorway, or don't fall down the stairs like a malfunctioning robot, it's because your brain is constantly guessing where things will be a fraction of a second from now. So your sense of now is actually part replay, part prediction, like watching a movie where the last frame and the next frame overlap. Some neuroscientists argue that the present doesn't objectively exist. It's just a psychological window of about three seconds where your brain bundles experiences together. That's why music works. Notes spaced apart still feel connected because your brain says, let's pretend these separate sounds are one nice moment. Without that illusion, every song would feel like a chaotic mess of disconnected beeps. So is there really a present? Not for your brain. You're basically running on delayed programming, like a live stream with a built-in lag, except you can't turn it off and no one warned you in the comments. Number 2. Time dilates when you're being watched. Ever notice how doing something alone takes a normal amount of time, but the moment someone stands behind you silently judging your existence, time mutates? Suddenly your brain is doing advanced math, your hands forget how hands work, every second feels like 10 years. All because a coworker, parent, or stranger decided to hover in your personal bubble. This isn't just social anxiety, it's biology. When someone watches you, your brain amps up self-monitoring. It's like your internal narrator goes, Okay, you're being observed. Don't mess up. Seriously, don't mess up. That pressure increases your cognitive load, which makes time feel slower. The more your brain processes, the longer the moment seems. It's the same effect athletes describe when they take a penalty shot or musicians feel when performing on stage. Time doesn't just slow. It stretches, wobbles, and sometimes freezes like a bad Wi-Fi connection. Your brain temporarily switches into hyper-awareness mode, gathering extra details in case the situation is important or embarrassing, which in brain terms is basically the same thing. And here's the delicious irony. The watcher isn't actually judging you 99% of the time. They're thinking about dinner or their phone or why pigeons walk the way they do. But your brain interprets observation as danger because evolution said, if something is staring at you, it might be a predator, so act weird and overthink everything. So the next time someone stares at you while you type your password or bag groceries or try to pick a movie on Netflix, and time suddenly feels like it's melting, just remember, nothing's wrong with reality. Your brain just thinks it's auditioning for a nature documentary. Number 1. Maybe time isn't real at all. Picture this. You're sitting alone at night, scrolling on your phone, and suddenly you remember a childhood moment so vividly it feels like you teleported back into your tiny shoes. Or you think about the future, something that hasn't happened yet, and your brain reacts as if it's already half-living in that imaginary moment. If time were truly solid, fixed, and universal, your mind wouldn't treat memories and guesses with the same emotional weight as the present. But it does. Constantly. Some physicists argue that the past, present, and future all exist at once, like pages in a book, already printed, already there. You're just reading your way through them one page at a time. That means the flow of time, the feeling of moving forward. That might be something your brain invented to keep you from having a full existential meltdown every morning. 
Einstein called time a stubbornly persistent illusion, which as scientists speak for, it feels real, but don't trust it. In relativity time bends, stretches, slows and speeds up depending on gravity and motion. Your now is different from someone else's now, if they're moving fast enough or chilling near something with really intense gravity. So which now is real? Maybe none of them, maybe all of them. But your brain doesn't care about physics, it cares about survival, and survival requires order. So your mind strings moments together like beads on a necklace, convincing you that you're walking along a single timeline with a past behind you and a future ahead. But that neat story might just be a story, your brain's custom-made user interface. It's best attempt to simplify a reality you're not equipped to experience raw. If time is a dimension instead of a river, if it's a structure instead of a flow, then your life is less like a movie and more like the DVD menu. Everything already exists, you're just clicking through scenes. And the fact that you feel time passing, that's just your consciousness updating like software. Which means the real question isn't, is time real? It's, what else has your brain been lying to you about? That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.